The next table you see, again, all in one line of code, if you, if you provide it, you do not need to provide it, but if you provide it, you could simply provide an empty table like this, and that says create a default body that has all the default body parameters. In one, one little two, two bits of code there, just open bracket, close bracket, you've replaced a whole bunch of code that says add a physics body, make it dynamic, give it a bounce of 0 0.2, yada, yada, yada. And even here, it's smart enough to say, oh, it's a circle. So if this had been new, new circle, it would say, oh, it's a circle. I need to put a circular body on it. So it, it does all these little things for you. Or you could specify specifically a radius. Make sure it's fixed rotation, because I didn't want, when the collisions occurred, I did not want the body to rotate. I set the bounce to 1, friction to 0. I set the is bullet property. And here's another thing. Um, when you specify bodies in using the traditional physics <clears throat> add body, you can specify some of these fields as a in a table that you pass to add body. But for SSK, even if they have to be specified subsequently by attaching them to the body, so some some things like I think is bullet is actually you would have to say ball, and I could be wrong, but let's just say that I'm right in this case. There are fields like this where you set a property after the fact, but you can't pass it in. That's not true for SSK. SSK, all of the parameters can be passed in, and it knows how to correctly apply them. So just uh, my reasoning here. I don't like to type out all this code. It makes it hard to read. Really, all we wanted to do for the example here was create a ball with a body and just move on in our thinking. And that's why, from now on, I'll be using SSK in the example. Okay, so I think that's about as far as I want to go with looking at the code. I've, I strongly encourage people to dig into it, change the values, run sample 3 because that will give you the best perspective on what's going on. And then when you are ready to go, go ahead and run the, run the editor. So comment this out. Run the editor simply by uncommenting that or adding a couple of extra dashes. Bring it up. And here we have the editor. And what the editor is, is a drag and drop editor. And I will give you the, uh, the nickel tour on what's going on here. This gray block here is the editor region that represents the board itself when we play the game. What I've done is taken a group, moved to the center of the screen, put a rectangle in it, drawn a grid of shapes inside of it, each shape representing a node in the possible paths that our Ichi clone game can have, and then in the group that contains this, this subgroup, I've placed little buttons and attached a listener that lets me drag and drop them, and then when I release them, it checks to see if the, the shape is near to one of these nodes or far away. If it's far away, nothing happens. If I drag it and drop it and it's near a node, like this, it snaps to the nearest node. It does a little trick calculation, which you'll see in the code because this is scaled. So it has to figure out where's my position relative to the actual dot, and it puts it there. And then the dot will keep track. I, I set some uh, fields on the dot and on the piece so that they know about each other and the shape knows that it is uh, related to this position. Because later, let's just do some things here real quick. Oh, and you can place things, and then when you click them, they will change their orientation. And let's just do this, and then you can place a, the thing, and let's make it move like so. Also, it's worth noting that if you put a piece in here and you drag another piece and drop it on it, it will remove it, or you can drag it and drag it off. It will delete it. You can save it, and this will put it in a table. The table is located in the sandbox, in the documents folder, in a file called mylevel.json, which if we look at it, looks like this. This is uh, for you to dig into and examine. And then if we, let me get this here so you can see it. 
If we click the test button, what it will do is it will load the game module, game.lua. It will destroy this group and all of the, its contents, so everything gets removed. And it creates a button up here, which then, oops, I placed too many objects. Um, places a button up here so we can go back to the editor. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I would encourage people to dig into these bits of code. They are pretty straightforward, relatively well commented, and as you'll see, it's super simple to make your own editors in Corona, which you can do to extend your games later, right on the device, because everything I just did there works on the device. You can actually build this for your device, install it, run the editor, the ex exact sample that I have here, and make and save levels and, and restore them and, and run them. Excellent. Now you, you mentioned a, a level loader. Was that? Yeah. So the level was... loader is Game Lua. Uh, now let me just show you what I meant there. So if we look at the editor, the editor starts here. I just called the table editor, so it's a module. You know, it's just using this table trick to create modules. But then. Later on, when you click the test button, mm. it will call on test. On test is the listener for the test button. What it does is it calls the listener for the save button that does the saving. There is it. It's this bit right here. It's all it takes to save your level. And then removes the editor group. That's that bit that I was talking about right here. Actually, the editor group contains everything on the screen, and this little bit here is what's called what I call in the file the level group. And then I require the game module store what is returned in game. And if we look at game, game is nothing more than another module with some physics code, the localization, my locals, uh, a function for loading the level, uh, another one for drawing the bumpers stuff that you can dig through. So it loads the module and then it runs and I pass in the name that we've stored and this is to give you a sort of like a heads up or a, uh, a leg up on modifying this code to accept otherwise named levels because if we wanted to we could uh, where is it? There we go. I could Name that Bob. And just go right here. And this is breaking the functionality of the editor, but I just want to demonstrate what's going to happen. So the editor loads this level. Let's put some more stuff in here. And yet when I run test, because I modified my code just now, it's going to load Bob. Bob doesn't have those pieces that I just added. So my point there is, is that I gave people who are going to really dig into this a hint on how to modify this code to start loading otherwise named levels. So again, loads the module, calls the run function. This is what I meant by the level loader, level loader slash game running code. And uh, just for the purpose of using it with the editor, this returns a group that everything is contained in so that we can create a button in the editor called edit. Again, and when we click this, it'll destroy this and rerun the editor. So you can go back and forth real quickly. Okay, yeah, because I can see how you could take that. Even if you didn't want to include a, a level editor in the game, per se, you could use it to... Like make you just your levels. Showed, yeah, make all your levels you know, visually, save them out, yeah. rename them as different files, and then when you wanted to go in and create a, 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 a scene, create a grid of uh, buttons and then just link them up. Yeah, this is exactly how I do my games. I don't hand play stuff and like calculating, oh, it needs to go two pixels to the right. I use tools. I, I, if I need a tool like this, I make a tool. This literally took like, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour to make? Not even that. Done. You've got yourself a ready-made editor, and if people follow, they don't need to use SSK, okay? But what they can do is, because SSK makes each line like shorter, they can see basically like the thrust of what I'm trying to do here and they say aha 
I make a piece, I make a builder, I make a little table entry that keeps track of the parameters that I need to reproduce it, save that, load it, have a builder that looks at those parameters, done. Yep. The concept is, is straightforward. Cool. Awesome. Well, I, I love this, and uh, yeah, everybody, like I said, needs to go download the code and just play with it. Pick it apart. See, you know, first of all, see how it works, and then pick it apart. Change the values. Make make it your own. Understand Absolutely. how you know internalize it. Make so, it your own. This is good stuff. Make it so. Make it so. Number one. Make it so. All right. Well, thanks for that. I appreciate that. That's that's good stuff. So again, we, we, like we said before, we're focusing in on the core mechanics of the game, not necessarily you know the whole complete finished uh, publishable aspects like you know all the scenes and the, the splash screens and the, and the game overs and all that stuff like that we've already done that you can check those out in the previous uh, hangouts that we've done um, like one like that was it 126 I think is uh, kind of the starting point where we started having these uh, these game uh, mechanic conversations and so you can go check those out uh, but that's it so so thanks for being here this week and uh, be sure to come back next week it will be talking to Cato Place about uh, CB effects and his you know particle effects library and uh, we'll have more uh, talk about uh, game development using Chrome SDK until then have a great week and happy coding